Hello everyone, the Nord Mary here and you are watching Animated Biology with Arpan. So in this video, let us talk about the erythrocyte sedimentation rate or ESR. So ESR is a test of blood that measures how quickly the erythrocytes, that is the red blood cells, settle at the bottom of a test tube that contains a blood sample. Now if you take some blood in an anticoagulant added tube and wait for some time, you will see that the RBCs will settle down at the bottom. And the distance in millimeters of RBC fall in one hour is the sedimentation rate. Now let us understand what biology plays behind the ESR test. Now if you take our tube with anticoagulant added and put some blood sample into it and wait for some time, you will see that the plasma will get separated in the top and there will be RBC sediments in the bottom. Now this occurs because of something known as rule of formation. Now normally RBCs are present in the blood in a free floating manner but due to the influence of certain factors known as the pro sedimentary factors which are mostly fibrinogens immunoglobulins RBCs undergo something known as the rule of formation which is nothing but a coin stacking arrangement of the RBCs now this rule of formation causes sedimentation of the RBCs over a period of time now normally the red blood cells settle down relatively slowly but if the rate becomes abnormally fast, then that indicates an inflammation that is going on in the body. Now, what causes rise in ESR? Now, rise in ESR can be pathological or physiological. Pathological causes include malignancies, infections, connective tissue disorders, as well as autoimmune disorders. That means mostly the inflammatory diseases. Whereas physiological rise can occur in old age, female sex, menstruation, and pregnancy. Not only ESR rises, sometimes ESR dips also. Now this decrease in ESR can be again pathological as well as physiological. Pathological causes include polycythemia, sickle cell anemia, low plasma protein, as well as leukocytosis. Whereas physiological causes include young age, male sex, and dehydration. Now, how can we use ESR test in the clinics to treat patients? Now, doctors prescribe ESR test to determine if you have an inflammation in your body. But as we all know, there can be a lot of conditions which lead to inflammation in the body. And hence, ESR cannot indicate a particular diagnosis and hence is very non-specific. However, ESR test tells about the prognosis. That means how a patient is responding to the treatment. That means, suppose when the patient gets admitted to the hospital, you measure an ESR which is quite high and over the period of hospital stay, the ESR uh, levels fall and reach more towards the normal levels, then you can say that your treatment is working and the inflammation levels in the body of the patient is decreasing. And that is how ESR tells about the prognosis. And hence, there is a popular saying that goes on in the medical schools, ESR has little or no diagnostic value whereas ESR has a prominent prognostic value. I believe you have understood today's video well. If you have understood this video, please go and check out the Facebook page and Instagram page of Animated Biology with Orpen where you can get high quality notes and flashcards of ESR as well as many other topics. The links are in the description box below. Also, you can support the channel so that we can continue to make high quality educational content for free by subscribing to us on Patreon. You can also use Super Thanks icon to support our channel which is in the bottom right corner of any video. And you can contribute using ATM, PayPal or UPI. Now if you wish to connect with Arpan, the social media links of Arpan are given in the description box. Also for medicine related content, I would recommend you to follow my channel the Nord Medic. All the links of Nord Medic are given in the description box below. Until then, bye bye. See you in the next one.